Like I said before in my top 10 games of 2019 video, this year wasn't the greatest year for gaming, but it wasn't the worst. However, since there is a top 10 games of 2019, there has to be a top 10 most disappointing games of 2019. So here are the top 10 most disappointing games of 2019, and surprisingly, there are no honorable mentions. So, let's just jump right into it. Number 10. Believe it or not, when this game was first announced, I was actually excited for it. I wasn't like the rest of the Sonic the Hedgehog community or people on the outside looking in. Team Sonic Racing is surprisingly somewhat of a good game. However, the only parts that I'm disappointed in with these games are the time trials. I mean, to me, they are just difficult. I could not complete this game, however, because I had to complete two time trials and I believe World 2 or World 3 and I just got stuck on them to the point that I just gave up. So really, the reason why this game is even on my top 10 most disappointing games of this year is because I couldn't complete a time trial sequence. I'm not a big fan of time trial levels in any type of racing games. So it's kind of funny that the top 10 most disappointing games for number 10 and the top 10 best games of 2019, number 10, are both games that have nothing really wrong to the core gameplay. It's just my preference. But Team Sonic Racing overall is not that bad of a game. It's just really disappointing that they rely so much on the time trials to advance the story. Number nine, Pokemon Rumble is a huge, huge guilty pleasure for myself when it comes to the Pokemon sideline games. However, I'm not a big fan of Pokemon Rumble Rush for the following reasons. One, it feels way too microtransaction-y, and two, the whole game is a timed event. Think about it, you only have a couple of weeks to get to the last Pokemon of whatever island that we are exploring on. Usually that Pokemon is either a pseudo-legendary Pokemon, a legendary, or a mythical Pokemon. The issues that I have is that even when you try to befriend that pseudo-legendary, legendary, or mythical Pokemon, down the road you could probably find and befriend a more powerful Pokemon of those same species. And that is something that I feel is a huge time waster, and also wondering why this game even exists. I don't know, I feel like Pokemon Rumble was just one of those games that maybe it should have stayed either on the 3DS or head over to the Switch and have a compelling story. Actually take some time and effort for the sideline Pokemon games. Hopefully we'll get one down the road, but honestly I just feel like with sideline Pokemon games, I feel like mobile is the place it's going to be unfortunately. And that just saddens me. Number 8. One word that describes Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Boring. Granted, it is better than the prequel. However, I just feel like when it comes to some aspects, say the story and even character progression, Ubisoft hasn't even moved in any sort of direction. They haven't took a step forward or even a step back. It's just standing still. I remember numerous times in the story where either you do something really heroic to help the resistance or even the resistance has a type of hero and that hero is around other NPCs. No NPC is being like, oh my gosh, there's there he is, there's Charles, there's there there's there he is. Oh my gosh, it's the hero who saved us, or is the hero who got us this food and the supplies. No, not none of that at all. Even your own character, when they head into different types of outposts and settlements, the NPCs just look at you and it's just like, Yeah, what do you want? Welcome to my shop. Here time to sell stuff to you and it just feels lifeless the whole area the whole the whole game is just lifeless in my opinion it is a step in the right direction color scheme compared to new york and the division here in washington dc there is a little bit of more of a color it's not all just gray there's a little bit of brown a little bit of red but yet again that does not make up for how boring the story is how the other NPCs don't really interact with your character and character progression in this game is just it's never really moved in any sort of direction. Number seven, Mark Hartour just sucks honestly. I feel like the controls are the main gameplay component that's holding holding this game back especially with wide turns but also the game is just way too microtransaction-y and just like Pokemon Rumble Rush there are way too many timed events, so if you miss a certain time event, well, maybe it might come back, maybe it won't. 
I'll be honest, Mario Kart Tour, I wouldn't even waste the time trying to download the game. I would just skip out on it. If you own a Switch, get Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And if you own a 3DS, get Mario Kart 7. There are better Mario Kart games to play than Mario Kart Tour. Number 6. Wait, this game came out this year? Number 5. I think I'm going to get a lot of hate for having this game at number 5, or even my top 10 most disappointing games of 2019 list. Super Mario Maker, compared to the prequel, it's just okay. Nothing really has changed when it comes to making levels. Granted, it's nice that they added Super Mario 3D World and they need to add another type of different 2D Mario type of game like Super Mario Bros. 2 and or even Super Paper Mario. I think that would be really cool to see which one they do. But this game has just gone way too corporate in my opinion. There's no more amiibo costumes, which sucks because I actually really like those and I base majority of my levels from the prequel based around those amiibo costumes. This game to me, they've set so many rewards and so many milestones for people to try and complete. But in reality, about 98% of the player base who play Super Mario Maker 2 are not going to meet those goals or even those rewards. So really, this game is in a way all for nothing. It was fun for the first maybe month, two months, three months max. But Nintendo needs to kind of hurry up and roll out more updates when it comes to this game. We recently just got the Legend of Zelda update and it's really cool. But to me, it's like they could have done more. They could add in more types of different gameplay elements based off of other Nintendo franchises. I don't know, hopefully Super Mario Maker 2 will improve, but as the track record goes currently right now, it's not really moving as quickly as it could. I also wanted to add that the story mode is okay at best. It's really just meant for people to kind of get new, fresh ideas by playing other people's levels, usually people from Nintendo who made these type of levels. So in a way, it's supposed to help players, but in my honest opinion, I have not seen that. I've just been seeing the exact same, like, oh, either don't move type of level, or yeah, let's just make a either music level or a level that's way too difficult to the point that you just don't want to play this game anymore. Also, the online for this game, when you're either doing PvP or even PvE, it just sucks. Nintendo needs to fix their online infrastructure badly and maybe it might improve but currently just right now the online features of PvP and PvE it just sucks. It's just not not good at all. I wish Nintendo just didn't even think about adding that. Number four. I felt like if Borderlands 3 came out at the beginning of this console generation I feel like the game would have been hilarious. The game would be doing a lot better than what it currently is but also some of that is also thanks to the ceo of randy pitchford and some of the decisions that 2k and gearbox has taken say against other streamers and youtube creators borderlands 3 to me is not funny the writing is terrible the story is just downright boring a lot of the new characters that they introduced they're not interesting they're really just annoying and if future Borland games are based around these newer characters, I think I'm done with the franchise altogether. I did not complete Borderlands 3. It is one of those games I do plan on returning to and trying to complete it, but just currently right now there are better games to play and I just wish Borderlands 3 was a lot better. Another issue is that it is a looter shooter. There are other games that are looter shooters that are actually outpacing Borderlands. Destiny is actually one of those game franchises that I think does looter shooters a whole lot better. Even though that really Borderlands was kind of one of the godfathers, it just kind of sucks seeing that Borderlands 3 is kind of being outpaced by newer franchises. I think Gearbox kind of needs to go back to the well and think of new ideas of what they can do with, with the new Borderlands games. Number three, I just want this game out of my life. Let me just quickly go over Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It's boring, the story's boring, the music's not really inspiring at all, the gameplay is just downright boring, it's not intuitive either. I don't know what happened. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands was actually fun having three other AI players or even actual real life players. That was a really fun experience going through and ki killing each of the cartel members. This game, we're going up against a rogue ghost and his squad, even though his squad is really anticlimactic. And we're going through different parts of the island, helping the natives of the island, trying to fix this whole situation. 
I don't know about any of you, but that just sounds boring to me. I just feel like Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon series needs to stay away from being too serious and actually have a little bit more fun added to it. This game, especially when it came to levels that you have to play through that mission stealthily, that was the final straw with me. I'm not coming back to Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. This game honestly broke me over the Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon franchise. And hopefully on the next game, if there will be a next game, they actually realize, hey, let's make this game about being fun. Let's not make it all serious. I just feel like there are Ubisoft franchises that you can be super serious with. But then there's also Ubisoft franchises where it's just like, okay, come on. You, we just, I just want to sit back, not even think about anything, and just kill bad guys. That's all. Number two. Let me say a couple things that I like about Anthem before I get into the disappointing and even the just downright terrible parts of this game. I like the music, and I like flying around in the exosuits. That is it. The story is terrible. The gameplay uh, could be improved on, it's not the worst, it's just okay at best. I just don't know what happened to this game. From what we have seen from E3, granted, and there's a whole bunch of story by Jason Trier from Kotaku that he investigated on how this game came to be and why it launched the way it did. It's just really strange and it's also kind of scary to think that this studio that has made Mass Effect Andromeda and now Anthem is making the next Dragon Age game. I'm just saying, after Dragon Age, if that game does not do well at all, I think it's time to close down Bioware. And I hate to say that because people are going to lose their jobs, but honestly, this studio has lost its touch. And EA, honestly, could be a huge cause for why Bioware has lost its touch. And that is something that is really sad as well. But, believe it or not, there are actual rumors that a team within Bioware is trying to reboot this game. Which is something that is inspiring, but also kind of confusing and asks the question, why? That's just how I feel. Why would you try to reboot this game? At this point, just move forward and just focus on Dragon Age. And if you do, Bioware... Tried to re-release this game, are you going to charge $60 for even people like myself who has bought Anthem? Or do we kind of get it for free or a discounted price? It's just there's a lot of ethical questions that comes to this. If they do reboot it, I mean, I will give them the benefit of the doubt. But yet again, that could be their third strike. So, Anthem is number two. That means there could be only be one game, one game that has disappointed me the most of this year. Number one. Everything about Jump Force is downright terrible. The gameplay is terrible. The fighting mechanics are just atrocious. It's one of the worst fighting games that I've ever played. The music is terrible, downright too annoying. The main story of this game is you kind of create your own type of character. You pick a team that you want to be on and there are different types of teams with different types of, uh, types of anime characters. And you go through the story of that certain team and their perspective of what is going on. This was supposed to be shown in Jumps, I believe 25th anniversary, and this is the type of garbage that they released to the public and charged $60. I paid $60 for this game. Also, the online component of this game is just terrible. This I don't know why this game came out. I don't know why, honestly, I got so excited for this type of game. I love Shonen Jump type of IPs. Dragon Ball, Bleach is my most favorite anime of all time. Naruto is okay, I don't really care that much for him. But even Yu-Gi-Oh is in this game. Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh is in this game. And yes, there are DLC characters on the way and have already been released. Kenpachi from Bleach has been released in the game. Sato Kaiba from Yu-Gi-Oh has been released in the game. Like huge anime characters from huge anime franchises are being introduced in Jump Force. And it's just, I guess that's kind of good for trying to make it right. But at the exact same time, this game is just, just bad. It's terrible. I don't know what else to say. This is my most disappointing game of 20, 2019. Also, this game kind of sexualizes some of its characters. Like for example, if you play as Robin from One Piece, 
and she takes so much damage her clothes kind of gets ripped off and it's just it, it's a little bit weird i just have to kind of point that out because it is a little bit uncomfortable but yeah pretty much this game is a hot mess and if you're a fighting game fan or even an anime fan do not buy this game please do not buy it i've actually been been inside gamestop stores and other retail stores that sell video games that the clerks are trying to sell this game by telling people, yeah, if you're a huge anime fan, this game is for you. And it's just like, no, it's not. No, it is not. This game is terrible. Please do not buy this game. Vote with your wallet. Tell Shonen Jump and I believe Bandai Namco that this type of game, this type of garbage should not be on store shelves. That we should not be wasting our time with this type of game. This game has so much potential to it and it just falters on all on all fronts jump force is my most disappointing game of 2019 what a crazy year it has been i actually have 10 games on my most disappointing games of 2019 list compared to last year when i only had five the next video will be the top 10 best games of the decade from 2010 to 2019 until then see you guys on the next video and have a great day